climate change threatens life on the planet, and we know fairly well that fossil fuels are the leading source of greenhouse gas emissions. So why haven't society already transitioned to more sustainable alternatives like biofuels? Well, besides the fact that fossil fuels are a cheap source of energy for countries, to understand this we have to shift our attention to the technological aspect of biofuels. Hey, Fernando here. Today we are going to talk about second generation biofuels. We are going to, to look into the challenges faced by the industry and what can be done to overcome them. But first of all, what is a second generation biofuel? Biofuels can be divided into four different categories or generations according to the utilized feedstock. Starting, we have the first generation which are mainly divided into bioethanol and biodiesel. Bioethanol production utilizes food crops that are rich in starch and sucrose, like wet, maize and sugarcane. And depending on the feedstock, it can also be called a second or a third generation biofuel. Biodiesel, on the other hand, mainly comes from rapeseed, palm oil or soy. Advantages associated with using food crops are their cost efficiency and needs of converting biomass into biofuels, needing no intensive pretreatments. But the adoption of first-generation biofuels also faces challenges like the food versus fuel dilemma. These fuels use food crops for producing energy, but a growing population also means a larger demand for nutrition, which ultimately needs land to be produced. This causes an increased pressure over land use. Before we continue, let's zoom into the food versus fuel dilemma. In recent published reports, projections expect global energy consumption to continue rising through 2050. This is mainly a result of human population and GDP growth, because as the standard of living rises, so does the demand for goods and energy needed to produce them. While energy consumption is expected to rise, fossil fuels consumption should peak by 2030 and steadily decline, due to a decrease in unabated coal energy production caused by countries like China moving away from coal-fired power plants toward renewable energies. This will open an opportunity window for the growth of biofuels. Studies show that as demand for crops for producing biofuels increased, so did the market price of this food. Besides, increased market value of palm oil and other feedstocks led to extended deforestation of tropical rainforest for biofuel crops farming. After recognizing the challenges posed by the food versus fuel dilemma and the environmental impact of first-generation biofuels, researchers and scientists began exploring alternative solutions. This led to the development of second-generation biofuels. Unlike their predecessor, these biofuels are sourced from lignocellulosic biomass, including agricultural and woodland residues and other waste streams such as animal fats and organic waste. The shift to second-generation biofuels addresses critical issues. By utilizing waste products and avoiding competition with food resources, these biofuels offer a more sustainable and eco-friendly solution. However, the journey towards a cleaner energy source is not without its challenges, and processing second-generation biofuel feedstocks tends to be more complex than first-generation alternatives, primarily due to increased lignin content and the production of compounds that impact the fermentation process. Therefore, biomass pretreatment is often necessary with the main purpose of fractionating the lignocellulose into cellulose, lignin and M celluloses, making the sugar more available for the fermentation process. However, each pretreatment method has its pros and cons, including high energy consumption, costs, low sugar yield, toxic compound production and scalability concerns. Over the past 15 years, researchers highlighted challenges associated with second-generation biofuels. In 2010, studies emphasized issues like feedstock knowledge gaps, low synthesis efficiency, high costs, and production scaling difficulties. Since then, this perspective hasn't changed much, and scientists still stress the need for improved processes and increased sector investments. This doesn't mean there were no advancements during this period, but rather that such barriers still persist. So how can we overcome these challenges? Regarding the difficulties faced in the pretreatment process, some routes remain to be explored. The development of novel detoxification methods can increase the efficiency of the fermentation process, but comes at the expense of an added step that potentially increases already high costs. Metabolic engineering offers an alternative approach for enhancing lignocellulose utilization, creating strains with increased tolerance to inhibitors and biofuels given their toxic nature. Additionally, this technique can be applied to genetically modify plant biomass by suppressing genes, downregulating specific molecules, 
and overexpressing key enzymes. Microbial selection and improved growth culture conditions are also necessary for improved yield, and can be achieved through metagenomics, evolutionary engineering and molecular adaption. And lastly, microbial culture techniques may also be useful to extend the carbon source utilization range and make downstream processing easier. In the economic aspect, more research into the potential of increasing profitability through integrated biorefineries need to be done. Besides, investments in the industry are essential for ensuring ongoing research and development and future cost reduction. So, who is working on overcome these technical barriers? Lancetec, GrandBio, Neste, TMO and Etec are some of the players investing in second-generation biofuels production, with feedstocks ranging from sugarcane processing waste to cooking oil and animal fat from the food industry. Companies are slowly expanding into the second-generation biofuels market, but unfortunately, most of the biofuels are still at laboratory scale, with few countries having plants at the commercial level. Well, the truth is that even though advancements have been made, technical economical barriers still hinder the development of the sector. Second-generation biofuels themselves are not capable of supplying the current worldwide energy demand. Therefore, they have to be paired with other technologies to ensure that the demand is met. Besides, a part of agricultural waste may have alternative uses or markets. Therefore, all decisions to use them for biofuels have to be done with this in mind. For the medium term, we can be optimistic about biofuels capturing a significant part of the world energy demand. But our expectations have to be realistic. And the reality is that technical and economical challenges still hinder the development of these technologies. So, thanks for watching and until next time!